Hi guys, Jeff here from TAP. Just want to start, start your walking through a, a, a repair process we're doing on this Nissan Leaf. So it's a 2017 electric Nissan Leaf. And it's got a installation fault code coming up. So it's a fault code relating to high voltage leaking to the chassis of the vehicle. So that's what, what it's in for. We've got to diagnose it. So we're not really knowing what we're going to find, but the first thing we need to do is get the battery pack out. We know that the, the isolation fault is within the battery pack itself, which underneath the car. So we're going to go through the whole process of getting the battery pack out and opened up and go through the process of diagnosing exactly where this uh, insulation leak is. Hope you enjoy the, 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 the journey. Okay, we're up to our next stage here. We've depowered the car by taking the actual uh, service plug out. Uh, we've now disconnected the battery pack. So here we have the battery pack uh, bolted up underneath the vehicle. We've now disconnected the main DC-DC line here, which goes up to the inverter converter. We've disconnected the other high voltage cable as well as our low voltage cable. So now we're ready. We've checked that now the vehicle is dead. So we've done the dead alive dead test. Uh, we're safe now to get our PPE off and get this battery down and open it up. So we'll get back to you once this is down and we're getting this battery opened up. Yeah, the, the, the lid is completely glued down as well. So we've taken the bolts out, but we need to now go in there and break the seal. So I've got a standing knife, but when we were in Hobart, this seemed to be the best tool. So it basically just gets in under here and you've got to break that seal. Now, there is a lip inside to stop you going too far in. So you can't damage anything internally, what I've been told. Uh, but yeah, just get in there and start breaking that seal. We'll get the standing knife and start doing it. This seemed to be the best, the best thing to try and break it. Hi, right, we're back again, we've got the battery pack out, we've been able to it onto the ground and we've been able to remove the lid. So here we have the high voltage battery pack opened up. Uh, straight away you can tell that there's a bank of batteries here, we've got some, uh, a bank here, bank here, huge bank here, all the way through. So in total there's 96 uh, cells uh, or batteries here which we can pick up on our leaps file through our scan tool, uh, looking at those voltages. And we've got a suspicion that the, the leakage is going to be up in here. We had a cell, three or four early cell uh, showing up some bad voltages or some lower voltages uh, in millivolt difference uh, so we suspect it's there but basically this is the pack what we do have in here is our contactor so we have a main positive and negative contactor together with a pre-charge relay and pre-charge resistor uh, to stop that surge current going through we've got our isolation plug and this is the plug that we unplugged from inside the car earlier on to isolate the, uh, the battery and, and, and isolate it in half, basically. Uh, so the next step is for us is now to challenge us to, to work out exactly where this isolation leak is, is, is uh, uh, source is. Uh, and as I say, we suspect it here. So what we're gonna first up do is I'll isolate the batteries into three banks. One bank here, which we'll just disconnect from there. We'll disconnect this one by taking this link right out here. So this bank will be then separated, and then obviously this bank. So then we can do those isolation tests again, the mega tests, and determine which of these three uh, banks, hopefully there's only one of them, that shows some side of the leak. So that's our next step. We'll get these isolated up, and then we'll come back and do those tests. Okay, we're back to actually doing the battery testing now. So we've got the battery pack opened up, and we've isolated the battery into three sections. So we've got this bank of batteries over this side, totally isolated. We've got our battery management system disconnected, etc. So we've got basically battery pack one, battery pack two, battery pack three, and we're gonna check them individually. So we're gonna do the mega test where we're gonna apply a thousand volts uh, across uh, from the battery to chassis, and we're gonna be looking at what the resistance is. We're looking for a very high resistance at that thousand volts. So let's see how we go on this pack. We flick that button there. We're straight away to 1,000 volts and we're at 1,300 plus mega ohms. So really good resistance. As I hold the button there, that resistance is actually increasing as well, which is fantastic. That's what we want to see. So we've got really good isolation or resistance there uh, from the high voltage to ground. If we move it over to this second battery pack on this side, doing the same test, we're going to press that now. We're going to get to that 1,000 volts. We're now at 1,000 volts. We're at 900 mega ohm up into the 1,000 mega ohms now and increasing again as time progresses. So again, this battery pack here is testing very, very well for that insulation test. If we go to our third battery pack right at the back here, okay, it's a, a bigger battery pack, but again, it shouldn't make any difference. Our resistance should be the same. If we now press the test button on this one, we go, we wait a while here, but straight away, it's not applying any voltage. It's saying there we've got a, a 0.002 mega ohm uh, resistance, so very, very uh, different. 
and much uh, lower. And again, we've got no voltage being applied. So it's already sensing that there's a bad leak. So therefore it's not applying that thousand volts across that circuit. So without applying the voltage, it's not gonna be able to get a good resistance reading anyway. But again, this pack is here, got a bad insulation fault. So we've isolated that now. Now it's a matter of getting this pack apart, isolating the different cells within this pack and getting it itself down to which actual battery or which cell is actually uh, where the isolation fault is. So next step is to get this apart and then we'll continue the video then. Hi guys, just back to here. We've removed the, that big section of the battery pack which had the isolation issue. What we've done first up is actually measured each one of these 24 batteries voltages. And cell numbers, battery number three here came up at 0.03 volts difference. So all of them were 7.27 volts, basically exactly. This one came in at 7.22 or 23. So we highlighted that that's probably the battery. So we've isolated that battery from the rest of them now. And now we can do the same isolation test as we were doing earlier. So we're just on that particular cell. And if we press test, we can... We can see that we're only getting 17 volts and we're 0.004 mega ohms again. So again, we're getting that same reading, but now we're just testing that one particular battery. So now if we just switch that one off and we go to the rest of them. So all the rest of them are still connected. Uh, so we're testing all the rest of them basically for this isolation fault. And again, onto the chassis of the battery here. I press test if I can get my finger on it to it. No, not that bit. I'm feeling it. Okay, so we're testing the rest of the batteries now and straight away we jump to a thousand volts and into two thousand or two three hundred and four mega ohms. So we're getting our thousand volt reading, the rest of them are fine. So it's that, that cell number three or battery number three, so it's obviously where our problem lies. So we went out to isolate that pretty quickly, that that's our, our, our problem battery. Uh, and then we, so we've got a bit of a, a definite find here of where our isolation fault is. So it's been a good find. We might actually strip it down now just to confirm with that battery right out and see if we can see any physical uh, issues with the battery. Uh, if not, it's time to find another battery for this, for this pack. Hi guys, just back again. We've stripped this battery pack down. We've removed the offending cell or battery that we suspected was a problem. And straight away, we can see that there's some serious leakage. So the pouch cells of this particular battery, and I've got an example of a pouch cell here. So inside these battery packs, we've got these membranes or cells, and these are like little pouches. And inside there, that's a lithium ion battery, that's a lithium ion battery, and then they're connected up through the connection. So one of these has obviously sprung a leak, and there's not fluid per se in there, but they're a gel type of battery, and obviously they can leak out over time, especially when they get warm, that gel becomes a bit more liquefied, and that will then leak out of the cell. And that's what we've got here. So interestingly enough, with this particular vehicle, it wasn't that worried about the millivolt difference, that 0.03 volt difference at this point in time, but it was worried about the insulation. So there were two faults. One battery cell was a little bit fractionally lower than the rest of them, but more importantly, the car picked up that there was a high voltage leakage, and that was the thing that shut the vehicle down. So great find, we've just got to find another battery. We'll get another battery for this particular vehicle. We'll have to balance that, so we'll have to make sure that it's exactly at 7.27 volts before we put it in. Once we put it in, then we can then Put it all back together, back in the car and get this one back and uh, back up and running.